Alright, so this is going to be our final video covering context, and in this video we're going to take a quick look at the compositing context. Houdini does come with a built-in compositor in the form of COPS, or the compositing context. It's maybe not as powerful as some of the high-end studio compositing applications that are out there, but it's extremely versatile in as much as A, it's node-based, because Houdini is node-based, and also because we can write new nodes using VEX and using VOPS, which means it's extremely useful to us. So we're just going to take a very quick look at working with some image data in the compositing context. It's worth noting that we're not going to spend the time to talk about how images are constructed, the ver you know different things to do with channels in images and the likes. That's something that's kind of out of the scope of this video. We're not even going to break things down into here's a beauty pass, here's a specular mm -hmm. pass, here's a reflections pass. For those of you that are interested in how to have a scene rendered out into a bunch of different passes and then to put it all back together properly, make sure to check out the uh, Technical Director's Volume 2 DVD because that one's going to have a great deal of compositing work in there. Yeah. Great. So with that, we're not even going to work in any of the contexts we've seen before. We're going to work solely in the compositing context. So I'm going to click on OBJ in the path gadget and come down to IMG for image to jump into the compositing networks. So we have a compositing network in there for us by default. So I'm going to jump inside and I will change from my scene view over to the composite view for dealing with looking at images and the likes when working with compositing. So we need to create an image to begin with. And we can do that by bringing in a file. And by default, we get this butterfly picture that is installed with Houdini. And this is going to be the image that we are working with in this video. That's right. And this image is constructed from a number of channels, our three color channels and our alpha channel. And uh, we're going to do quite a lot of work with the alpha channel as well as modifying our color channels. So we can take the image data in each pixel and we can modify it either as a whole image or we can work with each pixel individually by feeding the image data through a series of nodes in the compositing context. So let's wire our image by right clicking on the output into a new color correct node. This node is extremely powerful. It gives you a huge range of control over modifying color levels in an image and we're going to take a look at just one of the parameters on the color correct node that is the add parameter for master what this does it goes in and for every single pixel value in our image it's going to take the specified color value here and add it to the color value of that pixel and the result will be the color value of the pixel output from our color correct node so let's say we were to grab add and we were to add some really horrible green to our image. We can see where in our default image we have black. We get zero added to this color, gives us this color on all of those pixels. And where in the image we had other colors to begin with, we take those colors, add that to this green, and we get newly colored pixels. So that's kind of cool, but we don't really want to have the green added to the background. I only want to add the green to our butterfly. Well, how do we go about doing that? We've seen on our original image that we have this alpha channel that we can work with. So we have white where we have the butterfly and black where we don't have the butterfly. So what if we use this as a mask for our color correct node? What if we say to the color correct, I want you to add 100% of the color we specify when we have one, when we have white, and 0% of the color when we have black. And then if we have a range of gray in between, we're going to have somewhere between 100 and 0% of that color added. And that's very easy to do. We can switch over to the color correct. I will put us back over to looking at our color channels. We can jump to the mask tab. And we can say for the operation mask, instead of using the mask input, which is on the left hand side of the node, I want to grab a channel from my first input and I want to use the alpha channel, that black and white channel of our image to control our color. So now when we change our color, we're only adding to the butterfly, the um, area of that original image that has white or in the alpha. We add slightly less to the areas in the image that were a tone of gray in the alpha and we don't add anything to the areas that were black. So that's kind of cool, but what if we were to take our alpha channel, branch off and work with our alpha channel in another section of the network, because we can work with alpha channels like any other data in Houdini or any channel in compositing we can work with and branch off, work on that data and, and bring it back together with other channels and the likes. 
So what if we were to branch off, work with our alpha channel in a way that we can combine it with other images to generate a new alpha channel and then use that to control our color correct? We can do that very simply. I'm going to middle click off of our image and create a channel copy cop. And this is going to allow us to copy channels from a target channel over into a source channel. Um, sorry, it's going to copy from a source into a target. Right. So what do we want to copy to? We want to copy to our color channels. And what do we want to copy into those colors? We want to copy our alpha channel. Why? Because up on this image, we're dealing with alpha in the alpha channel and then various shades of gray in our three color channels. Now here, I'm dealing with that alpha channel in all of my channels. So I can work with my alpha channel like it's a black and white colored image, as opposed to working with it as the alpha channel itself. And that's really useful because now I can drop in a ramp cop. And the ramp cop is going to generate a black and white image. I do want to set this to be vertical. And we can take these two black and white images and we could combine them. We can combine them very simply by multiplying the color values together. So let's right click on the output of ramp, create a multiply cop, and wire our channel copy into the second input. And what the multiply does, it goes through pixel by pixel and it will take the pixel color value in this image and multiply it with the pixel color value that it corresponds to in this image. So you can see, obviously in this image when we have black, we're going to get zero multiplied by anything gives zero. And when we have one here in white, we're going to get one multiplied by the corresponding pixel here. We'll get that corresponding pixel back. The end result being, we have our butterfly outline with a gradient of a ramp inside the butterfly, which is useful because we can now use this as an alpha channel for our color correct. But before we do that, I would like to play around with the contrast to get a greater range between white and dark in that image. So I'm going to wire our multiply into a new contrast chop, uh, cop. Sorry, And we can jump over to the scale tab of the contrast cop and we can boost our contrast seeing that we're getting brighter white areas and darker low areas in our image. And with that, we can now wire our contrast into the mask input and jump back to our color correct. If we jump to the mask tab of our color correct, we're no longer dealing with the first input. We want to deal with the mask input. And we want to deal with, we can deal with any of the three color channels. They do contain the same color information in all of them. So I'm just going to set the color channel to be looking at red. And we can see instantly the effect that that is having if we come over to our color. We can see that if I shift click on our contrast, we can see both images together. Where we have white in our, our, in our mask, we're adding full, again, that uh, orange color. And when we have less white, uh, so darker and darker shades of gray, we add less and less of this color. So now we're getting a gradient of orange added more towards the top and less towards the bottom. The great thing about that is if I shift, uh, shift click the ramp, we can change the parameters over a ramp and easily create really nice gradients across our butterfly. So instead of creating a vertical ramp, let's create a radial ramp. That's kind of cool, not what I was after. A concentric ramp, on the other hand, will give us um, dark on the inside and adding orange on the outside. And we could come back down to our color correct and on the mask tab, we can invert that mask and now we get orange added to our background, orange added to the center, and fading out. So the wealth of possibilities of what we can do by working with alpha separately from the image and bringing it in as masks on other cops is limitless, really. So with that, the last thing I would really like to do would be to take a look at how we can now get this image data back out to disk in the form of an image. And that's really easy. Right click on the output of this guy. We can come up to in out and we can create a ROP file output. This takes a feed of data into the output and it gives us very similar settings to when we rendered out images from Mantra. So I'm going to render a single frame. I'm going to output that picture directly into mPlay. And now if we were to click render, we're going to take whatever image data we have coming down 
from this network and it will feed into mplace something that is really nice since we're dealing with image data here not 3d data rendering compositing networks is incredibly quick so um and we'll see when we come to look at compositing in more depth in our second technical directors dvd that's why compositing is so powerful because it allows you to make a lot of changes in near to real time and with that that's everything i wanted to cover in compositing so thanks a lot guys